Today I'll uh, take you to the heart of Sicily. This is a recipe which uh, my sister-in-law Juicy and I have been discussing for a few days and it's actually very very specific to the town I come from called Castelvetrano in Sicily but also to the western side of uh, the island. It does require good preparation and you will see from my ingredients here that uh, I've got a number of uh, vegetables, sauces and uh, all laid in front of me so that uh, it becomes seamless. Just uh, stay with me guys because uh, you've made some comments about some of the broccoli recipes that uh, I have posted and you've loved it. If you've loved that, you're going to absolutely adore this one. I've got a whole broccoli and I'm going to be removing the florets from half of it. This is uh, quite a large uh, and big broccoli so I will be cutting the florets in half and if they're very very big I will cut them into quarters as well. I've got a large bowl of water, uh, cold water, from the tap and uh, I will briefly dip them in so that uh, I give them uh, a preliminary wash. I've put some water uh, boiling here. Put the lid on and I'll boil quicker. I will be using this water to boil all of my vegetables so I will be putting some salt in only in the ones. And start boiling your vegetables, so start with the broccoli. So bring them to the boil and uh, let them boil for maybe 10 minutes but obviously not too strong on a simmering a sort of a temperature and uh, then uh, we will uh, come back to them. And now we'll be moving on to the next vegetable, the spring greens. These are very very tender, the middle leaves, so I'll leave them as they are so they can go in the water. The bigger ones where there is a, a chunky bit in the middle here, you can see that, I will be removing that. This recipe is all about tenderness, so we must make sure that anything that is hard it doesn't get in the way. As you get to some of the larger leaves, just uh, chop them uh, roughly, maybe into three pieces, so that they are all broadly the same size. Next I've got a bunch of uh, asparagus. I had this in the freezer, which I've defrosted, and that would be perfectly good for this recipe. I'll just chop them in half. I've also removed uh, about one centimeter from the bottom because it was a little bit tough and as I said we don't want anything tough actually having felt it it's still a little bit tough here so I will be removing a little bit more. The broccoli are cooked and uh, you do not want them uh, overcooked you want them not to be slightly al dente and I'll put them back uh, in uh, their original bowl. Remember keep this water because we're going to be doing the next batch of vegetables. Effectively, I'm now going to be replacing the broccoli with uh, the spring greens and off they go on the hob as well. And I'll do the same with the asparagus. How long will they need to cook? The spring greens will take about five to six minutes and the asparagus about three minutes. Okay. In the meantime, I'll be moving on to some uh, sauce. This um, recipe, key ingredients is broccoli and sardines. I could not find any fresh sardines, if you can, even better, but this is a tin of uh, sardines, there are three in there in a brine and that would be just as good for the purpose of this recipe. So put a little olive oil in a saucepan and add your sardines. Make sure that uh, you have removed uh, all of the brine or any water left over. And do not worry about removing any of the bones, they will just disintegrate anyway. Once they start sizzling, start breaking them up with a wooden spoon and I will be adding uh, 500 milliliters of uh, passata. Once the sauce starts boiling, put the lid on and let it simmer on a low heat for 10 to 15 minutes. Remember, you do not need to add any salt to this sauce. Greens are done, we're just putting them in the bowl. Ensure you drain uh, as much of the water as possible. And here's my asparagus. Look at the water, how green it is. We will move on, on to the next phase now and that is uh, frying your vegetables. A little olive oil in a frying pan. And we will start them in the order that uh, you boil them. Broccoli first. Remember not to add any salt. The salt that we added in the water originally is enough. So once your vegetables are um, nicely fried and you can see that there is some brown at, at, at the bottom of them, you can put them back in their original bowl. And we will do the same with the spring greens, a little oil. This will not require as long uh, because they are obviously a lot softer.
the sauce uh, has been now simmering for 12 minutes. I'll turn it off and it's, as it's done. Literally two to three minutes and they're done. And in they go as well in their original bowl. And the asparagus last. So the asparagus are also cooked and uh, I'm not gonna be frying them all together. So I will be adding uh, my greens and uh, my broccoli. And before I turn the heat back on, I will be sprinkling a little seeds of uh, fennel. Ideally, the recipe um, requires uh, wild fennel, but there is no chance of me getting hold of wild fennel here. So, Juicy and I have uh, agreed that uh, seeds of fennel mixed here will be also just as good. So turn the heat back on on a medium um, setting and uh, one last uh, sprinkle of olive oil. This will just need literally a minute to a minute and a half to just uh, toss them together so that all of the flavors are blended together but also the fennel, the flavor of the fennel will uh, be capturing all of the vegetables. Wonderful, the vegetables are done. I'll now move on to the next uh, part of the recipe. A little bit more olive oil again in, a, in the same pan. You don't need to wash You don't need to wash the spoon either. Here I've got some uh, fresh breadcrumbs, which I grated earlier. I will be using a couple of handfuls. There's most probably enough here for four people really, but as it's two of us tonight, just a couple of handfuls would be fine. Just uh, put them on top of your oil. One and two. That should be the equivalent of uh, a glass full. A big glass full. A big glass full, yes. <laughs> also I've grounded 25 grams of uh, almonds which uh, you can add as well. Keep them on a medium to high heat but um, keep stirring them. Effectively the breadcrumbs will need to dry and uh, the almonds will need to toast and the almonds will give uh, the dish uh, a nice crunchness and uh, the breadcrumbs having absorbed that olive oil We'll also be releasing that uh, in uh, the final part of the recipe. And I think they're done. They look done, aren't they? Yeah, they're nice and dry and uh, they can come off the hob now. Let's move on to the pasta now. And uh, I will be using uh, bucatini. Bucatini is um, this uh, pasta here, which is uh, like a large, big spaghetti. And uh, has got actually a tiny little hole in the middle which uh, the word for hold is uh, buca buco in Italian and hence the word bucatini. Um, I was able to get hold of that yesterday in one of the large supermarkets but if you can get hold of uh, large spaghetti will do as well. Should you not be successful with either bucatini or large spaghetti I would suggest you use some short pasta something like the curly pasta that uh, is called nice uh, and chunky as well. What do you mean the twists or the Twists or the you know the ones that twist like, the, like a spiral like a spiral yes that's yeah. the, that's the one you could are, use yeah, yeah. I think what they're called now, yeah. so I've got uh, the water from the vegetables I decided to use it as it's all salted and nice and green anyway back on the hob and uh, I will be adding my bucatini which is 250 grams for two people very important very very important. Uh, instruction about this pasta is that it needs to be in and out within one minute, no more than one minute. This is instructions from Juicy. Strict instruction from my sister-in-law. <laughs> she said that uh, if I do for more than one minute, beside the point that she'll beat me up, <laughs> it will spoil it later. 55, 56, 57, 59 and 60. And that is why my minute up. I'm going to now drain it. And now we'll uh, start putting it together, a bit like uh, the same principle of a lasagna really. So I'll put some sauce at the bottom of uh, an oven proof container. I have left a little water inside the uh, pot with the pasta so that it doesn't get stuck uh, uh, together. And uh, I will just uh, add a little bit of my pasta at the bottom. I'm planning to do a couple of layers by the way. Then I'll put a little bit more sauce on top of my pasta. It is important because uh, the pasta will need to finish cooking with uh, the sauce of course. Again, same principle as a lasagna. And uh, give it a good uh, toss together so that it gets all covered. Next I will be placing uh, the mixture of uh, a little bit of the mixture of the vegetables on top of my pasta. 
How much is that? Um, third? About a third, broadly, yeah. I have sliced some cheese. I've got three types of cheese. This is Edam. And uh, make sure that you use nice stringy cheese for this uh, recipe. So I'll put some uh, on, uh, on this layer like this. Also, I've got some red Leicester. Again, uh, you use uh, whatever you like, but this is uh, fairly mild, the cheese. And it is important that the cheese is not too strong because actually the recipe is all about the sardines and of course also the broccoli and the vegetables. So you don't want the cheese to take over. Using the large holes of your cheese grater, put a little Parmesan cheese in big chunks, a few eggs, and a handful of uh, your toasted breadcrumbs and almonds. I started a second layer of pasta and I'm now going to be putting the rest of the sauce in. Again, uh, distribute it evenly so that uh, it covers everything. I'll put in uh, the remaining cheese that I've sliced earlier. My remaining eggs. Press it down if you can. The remaining uh, vegetables. As you can see, I have uh, gone native and start using my hands. <laughs> it's much easier. More bread comes on the top. And I'll be finishing it off with another layer of uh, chunky Parmesan cheese at the very, very top. It looks lovely from the side. Mm. Hopefully it, Hopefully it tastes nice. Is. Okay, so <laughs> the hard work is done. And we're not going to be popping it in the oven at 180 degrees for 30 minutes. But I'll check it after 20 and uh, if it starts getting a little bit too dry, I might decide to put tin foil on top. But we will be able to judge that after 20 minutes. Wonderful! It's been out of the oven for a few minutes. I've left it to cool down and I'm not going to cut it. I did say I was gonna be cooking for two people, but <laughs> I think there's more than more like two people here. Yes, four. How long was it in the oven for in the end? Actually, good, thank you. Um, I thought it was gonna be 30 minutes, but I left it in the oven for a further 10 minutes. So it's 180 degrees for 40 minutes. Using the knife, go on the edges of your um, dish so that you loosen it up. I would uh, try and serve it using a couple of spatulas if you wanted to retain a, a square shape. Mm, well done. And uh, you gently lift it on your plate. Oh my God, that <laughs> looks great. <laughs> Look here, you can see the build up of all the lovely colors and the smell is great. I did have uh, a few breadcrumbs uh, and uh, almonds left over. Do not get rid of them, please. And uh, you can actually put this at the table and uh, if you've got guests, you could invite them to just uh, sprinkle some fresh ones on top as well. That is a very traditional thing to do in Sicily. Mine was accidental. <laughs> I just left, I had some left over. And uh, I'll try some. I've got a feeling that this is gonna be a masterpiece. <laughs> And uh, it has to be served very, very hot, by the way. Oh my God. You have to try this. It's unique. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Juicy, for your tips. And uh, do make it. It's really, really good. Thank you for watching. I hope you do make it. And uh, when you do make it, please let me know how you get on and what you think about it. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye.